as we leave the doctor at the hospital in Medellin, Colombia, I'm remembering June 9th, 2019, the day we officially moved out of our 3,800 square foot house and into our 90 square foot van that I converted into our tiny house on wheels. Now, two and a half years later, we're looking back on seven months of testing the van and touring the U.S., one year in Mexico during the start of the pandemic, nine months in Central America, and now here on another continent and our ninth country. It's clear that this channel, this journey of traveling the world in a van, this is more than a van life journey. This is our life journey. And right now we're headed to Cali, another major city in Colombia to get a fourth doctor's opinion on Snow's knee. At this point, she knows it needs to be replaced, and we have to decide when and where this is going to happen. Based on the doctor's visit today, we know the knee replacement surgery will either happen in Medellin or Cali. We're headed to Cali to check things out, but of course, there will be some amazing stops along the way. We're not exactly sure how far it is to Cali. Like, if you were to drive straight through, we don't know. But this road is under construction. So like the road that we came into Medellin, I believe is going to be a windy, crazy road. The intel says that in some cases the road shut down. So we're going to take some steps to mitigate that by stopping along the way, getting up early to beat the construction. So we're actually out of the town right now, out of the city of Medellin, trying to get to our first destination. Want to tell us a little bit about this spot, Snow? Well, the first one is, and, and I think it's like a 12 to 14 hour drive from Medellin to Cali. We're going to try to break that up into four days if all works out well. And along the way, we got a really cool place we're going to stop and show you guys. But the first one is nothing fancy. What's good about the first one is it's supposed to be right before a really big road construction place. It's a soccer field we can park at right next to a police station. Super safe, but nothing fancy other than we'll be able to get a really early start in the morning and hopefully get through that construction before they shut the road down. So that's the plan. We'll show you guys if there's anything interesting along the way. It's all new territory to us, so it's pretty interesting so far. <laughs> But, otherwise, we'll show you our spot for the night. Speaking of van life, meet the new normal. These curvy roads are insane. Now, since we've been in Colombia, I have had most of the curvy road detail. But Snow is going to get her share today, <laughs> no doubt. Along this journey, we've definitely gotten to know the kitties a lot better. Now, I used to travel a lot, so I wasn't home all the time. And now, I spend almost every waking moment with these critters. And one thing I've learned about G-Money is he does not like curvy roads. He doesn't. He starts talking a little more than normal. Now, he always talks, guys. So, if you've been following along, you know that. But he talks to us a little bit more on the curvy roads. No doubt. But we've come up probably about a thousand feet in elevation already since we left Medellin. Pretty flat, fast climb. We were already, I think, in Medellin around 7,000 feet above sea level, so we're probably around eight or nine. We're into some pine forest, uh, similar to what was around where we stayed. But I also see some eucalyptus, but a lot of pine on the mountains up here. So we've made it away from all the motorcycle mess. There's still a few up here. They have their license plate number on the back of their helmet. But anyway, we made it out of that, but now we're behind the big trucks. And climbing these steep slopes, they're like in first gear, going super slow. And even if you get around one, you have another one there. It's all like no passing zones with no visibility. So your passing opportunities are limited. Now the only thing I'll say about this road, at least to this point, it is a better quality road than the one we came to Medellin on. But nonetheless, it is still narrow and curvy and, and slow and, going. And if y'all watched the video where we drove across Colombia in three days from Cartagena to Medellin, it wasn't a ton of fun. So we've tried to plan this one out a little better, bit better with some interesting stops. 
Look who's on the dash. So Vanna's been up here kind of sleeping it through all and G got a bad tummy. So Snow made a good call, whipped it off. We had a mess to clean up. Set us back about 10 minutes. Coming across this little sawmill now, I always like those things. I actually got our um, our little wood chucks that we used for leveling like the that. van at a place just like that in El Salvador. The school bus is out picking kids, or I guess dropping kids off. And what usually happens when we get up in these higher elevations, first the clouds, and the rain. <laughs> Snow's becoming quite a cloud driver. <laughs> Slippery road, slow down here. Easy, easy, easy. So those guys are repairing potholes along the side of the road. So one of the things about this drive is we come through these little, over these mountain ridges. And we saw this on the way, on the way driving to Medellin, but all of a sudden you're driving along in the town is along both sides of the road. And then on either side of the road, on both sides behind the houses, it's like a straight drop off. And so it's like we're on the top of the ridge and then you can look down sometimes and see houses go down three or four levels. But you're used to seeing cities built in a valley. This one's built on a ridge. This is my kind of place. Big old banana trees, palm trees. We're just getting back into the jungle. It's green and lush. And it's also, I believe, coffee territory. I just looked down the hill and think I saw a bunch of coffee plants. We should be getting close. And I think this it actually is, that's coffee right there. Yes it is. So this is part of the coffee triangle an area where the world famous Colombian coffee is grown. Wow. The clouds are clearing a little bit. I'm sure we're gonna have vis better visibility out of the van than on the camera, but it is stunning here, guys. A deep, huge valley gorge, and then the sides of the mountains are lined with coffee and then for the canopies, they have banana trees. And then there's bigger, taller trees, like what I call sloth trees. But all those kind of act as a canopy for the coffee trees. And you can just see these big, giant, lush coffee plants. Ugh, takes me back to when we were in Matagalpa in Nicaragua. But look at the stunning mountain view, wow. So we just came through this other city on a mountain ridge, or town I should say, on the mountain ridge up here, Santa Barbara. And this Mirador right before we got there was absolutely stunning. Off in the distance I could look and see down where it kind of got flat, like there was a river down there. And I may have even been able to see the ocean, I'm just not 100% sure that's what I saw. But as we come down through this town of Santa Barbara, it's another one. We're on the back side of the top of the ridge and we can just see these uh, apartments or condos or houses or whatever dwellings that are about three or four stories tall. And they, they're literally built up the back side of these mountains. I'm fascinated by this, but we've seen a lot of this so far in Colombia. And it's just really cool. And we're back in traffic again. Oh, that semi just locked up its brakes. 
Good news, after about a 10 to 15 minute wait, we are moving again. We moved about 200 or 300 yards and we are stopped. <laughs> it's camera. <laughs> Traffic's moving again. We haven't moved very far. All right, it looks like there was an accident up here, I'm guessing. I see there's, I see there's police. But the buildings for, come right along the road right here. You can hear the road noise. But these are actually houses, so you can see the little girl there. On this mountain face we're looking at the valley, you can see one, two, three, four, probably five or six cascadas just coming down. Uh, this is officially the number one most stunning drive I've ever been on. It's it's pretty, guys. It's I a wish new you could see it better than we're able to show it to you. We've got a new number one right here. We got out of the rain for a little bit, but we're back in it, and so that kind of stinks. But it stinks more for those guys who are riding in the back of this truck up there in front of us. Not sure if you can see it, but there's at least five or six people in there. I can see a dog, maybe a pig, not sure. But anyway, uh, rough day. So this right here is a look back. This is the valley that I was seeing from that mirror door. So this is a look back at those mountains that we just came over. All right, the sun's going down. GPS says we have about 18 minutes to go, but I could see around the corner and it's about to get a little flatter. I think we're gonna make it tonight, guys. Fingers crossed that the soccer field park that we're going to tonight to sleep at is open. We shall see. All right, we've arrived in La Pintada. And this is where we're gonna hopefully find some street parking by the soccer field. This is the town, what do you guys think? I know it's dark. Looks pretty cool to me. Yeah, it looks busy. Yeah, look at this. cattle yard. All right guys, we made it here. It looks like there's some kind of community center. There's some wa a weight room over there. And over here, I can't tell if it's a basketball court or soccer fields, but there's some sort of sports auditorium there. And the soccer fields are there. So we're in for the night. We made it guys, we made it. See y'all in the morning. It's about six o'clock this morning. We got a long drive. There's supposed to be a lot of construction on this road. We have a special treat today. 
So snow's still sleeping, but I'm gonna get us out of here and get us a little bit closer. Hopefully we don't have traffic too bad. We'll see, but we're out of here on the way to our next spot. Miss Pris is on the dash and ready to go, Orange Pumpkin. <laughs> We made it to the construction and the road traffic has stopped. There's ladies out here selling coffee and there's other vendors selling other stuff as well. Saw a guy just riding by in a motorcycle. Look, he had, looked like he had some sort of little biscuits or something he's selling in a basket. But in any event, we heard about this. We hope we get up early enough to beat it. So we'll see what the traffic looks like today, but it looks like it's gonna be another long day. We have gone through many smaller construction projects here in Columbia so far, but this is a big one and we can tell it is definitely one that needed to be done. Looks like they've lost sections of this road numerous times, probably in some mudslides or washouts. And uh, it's what held us up for almost 40 minutes this morning. But if you're new to the channel and you do not know, me and Kurt both come from civil construction background so whether you guys are interested in it or not we are right Curdy? yeah it's a long road closure and you can tell for sure that there's a ton of work going on and it's dangerous work too because in some areas the road is so narrow you can barely fit a van through and a semi truck and there's big <laughs> but the crews are just getting started there's bridge work there's all aspects of construction coming on and it's not all done with modern equipment it looks like a lot of it's being done with hand so yeah. i think this project's going to be going on for a long time unfortunately but it is one that needed to be done so good for the columbians the in this area shows. getting them a new road through here wow yeah they're having to build a retaining wall and everything yeah but it also looks like they're going to three lane some of this so that it'll have some truck passing zones in the future. So this is a good project for the country of Colombia. So we tried to get the super early start this morning to avoid what we had heard about this road. But it doesn't look like we made it. No. We're stopped again. Probably another 30 minute stop. But I think G's enjoying the extra snuggles. Or not. <laughs> Yeah, the gamble did not pay off. So G Money, when he goes on his walks, likes to chew on a little bit of grass. When we're stuck in the van too long, we've learned that sometimes he's just meowing because he wants a little grass. So Kurt got out and picked him a little bit. He sure seems happy. I think his tummy still bothering him a little bit. Yeah, yesterday, I don't remember if we told you guys or not, but he had a pretty upset tummy. We're having to watch him close today, keep an eye on his litter box, and make sure his tummy's okay. So, hopefully the grass is helping him. Forget about signs and rules. Such a rush mm. With your life playing from the stereo So the coffee fields are right out here. We've gotten back into it. This region looks a little different than the other coffee region. It, the mountains are a little more barren, not with all the trees like we saw in the other place. This guy right here is carrying a bag of coffee. We've seen several people out here picking coffee. Looks like the beans are ready. Look at this. 
Oh yeah, look at all the red beans. I know we're going fast, but you can see guys, we're here while they're picking the beans. All right, we just stopped off and got gas and I don't, or fuel. And I don't know if we've ever told you guys, but the fuel prices in Colombia are roughly around 8,500 pesos, which is about $2.25 a gallon. For That's diesel. For diesel. And while we were at the station, Snow saw a place where we could fill up the tank, so we did that, so that was great. And she's no, driving. driving. <laughs> <laughs> so it's second shift, and we're getting close to our destination, right behind a smoggy bus, so we'll see you in a bit. So for those of you who don't speak Spanish, I'm gonna give you a little tran oh, translation no. help. Oh no. <laughs> God help us all. <laughs> Termales. Terminales. Terminales. Termales. Termal. Termal. T-E-R-M-A-L-E-S. Termales is hot springs and that's where we're headed. Look at this truck full of eggs. Car just pulled out in front. Oh, it's still trying to come. So another little town we're coming through. So there they're selling little arepas and empanadas and other things like that. A little fruit stand, a panderia, which is the bread store. They have really good bread here. But you can see it's a bustling little city center. Look at that old car right there. It's a Jeep. Now here we've seen them use Jeeps a lot for collectivos or like taxis bank store right there. I don't know if you guys saw the armed guard. Graffiti is pretty common here. Almost everybody wears a motorcycle helmet. Some sort of shop. Multi-materials. Motorcycle coming right beside me right here. Blowing his horn. There's a carniceria so they sell meat, huevos, and it looks like they had some tortillas. So, Pereira is another big town we're coming to on our way to Cali. There's like a little hardware store. Another Pandaria. Tienda. Like a little convenience store with chips and things like that. They sell pollo there, a polleria. Mattress store. So, these little towns. All the little markets are right on the main road. Now this, I think, is actually a pretty big city, but it's kind of cool to see all the stores. Here's a barber shop. And then, of course, the diesel station, the fill-in station. And then we got a church up here. And so somebody's out here selling soccer jerseys, or I think uh, you call it football. And here's a little restaurant up here. All right, so that's little Jeeps used to haul stuff. Tienda, Dulceria, they sell cakes and things and whatnots. Guy painting his gate. There's a collectivo right over there. It's like a moto taxi. A drugeria, or what they call them? A pharmaceria. Pharmacia? Pharmacia, but here they call them drugerias. Drugerias. Tile store, electric store. Oh, that was like a headboard store for uh, heads. Mask, little girl's clothes. Ah, shoe store. That looked like cologne. Another Pandaria. And a bus. Tight turn on the left. Steep hill we're going down here. Wide turn. And now you can see we're off the main road and away from the markets and all the really cool stuff. All right, we just came through this little town. We're headed up to the Termales. There's some steep, tight little turns up through the hills through here. Le 
it go rain It's not your song to sing no more Goodbye blame Weights can lift you up But you can find a way to drop them Can you feel the wind? Say you do, it's how it all begins Then comes reason, then purpose Well, you will find your way In the meantime May the sun bless you with its rays It's how we learn It has to hurt, it has to hurt Every single turn Don't beg your pardon you're not someone's victim It has to hurt It has to hurt You can ask spring How it is when the buds are bursting You can watch the birds when they fly across the world Weights can lift you up Find a way to drop them When the new ones weigh you down You'll be on top of them The drops here are just straight down oh, Don't mind the fall Break down a when it burns, please Don't be concerned Cause it's how we learn It has to hurt, it has to hurt So that was a crazy two day drive to get here, but we've needed a place to relax and de-stress for a while. And Snow found this place along the way. It was actually recommended from some friends that we met along the way. But this is supposed to be some really nice hot springs. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys!